And as I told you that uh, as the scientists who are working on consciousness or meditation, they're looking the imprint of those activity in the neuronal architecture of the brain because brain consists of billions of neurons. And whether the neuronal activity is influenced or related with meditation, meditative states or other states of consciousness. So today's talk, like uh, at first I will say what are means by states of consciousness and brain waves. Because uh, you know that in the brain there are various types of synchronized waves, I will tell you later. And then uh, I will focus only one state of consciousness called meditation. And there are different states of meditation itself. There I have used the wisdom from two domains. One from traditional wisdom, as I told you before, that uh, first text I have chosen, Patanjali Jagasutra, and its one section is Samadhi Vada, means related with meditation and its states. And second book, I told you that uh, Buddhist scholars in ninth century, Kamalasila, name of his book is Bhavana Krama. Krama means sequence, so sequence of states or states of meditation. And third one is the joint text, Ganarnam by Shubh Chandra. And uh, just now I got the book in English translation. So uh, I, I, can, I cannot tell much about Jain wisdom, uh, but anyhow, in some future interactions, or maybe here there are some Jain scholars who can enlighten me in the discussion. Then uh, I will talk about what are the current neuroscience research on meditation and what are the pertinent issue and what are the challenges to neuroscience. What are the states of consciousness? State, there are uh, broadly four states of consciousness. One jagra or waking, another uh, shushupti, sleeping, I mean deep sleep, another is shopna, is dreaming, and fourth one is meditation. So today I will focus mainly on meditation and what are the states of meditation. Okay, so before that, uh, let me tell you that what are the types of brain waves, synchronized brain waves. I mean, scientists, they found it. There are several types of brain waves depending on the frequency. The largest frequency is gamma band called, is 35 to 70 hertz. Then beta, 12 to 35 hertz. Then alpha, 8 to 12 hertz. Then theta, 4 to 8 hertz and then delta, 0.5 to 4 hertz. Now you can ask me why I am telling these kind of things. Oh. Now waking and dream state, what are the neuroscient neuroscientists say about this? You know, in both Jakrat and Shapna, waking and dream state, the high frequency oscillation or gamma wave is dominant. So the issue is how do you differentiate between waking and dream state? Because in both the state, there is dominance of gamma waves. So it reminds me a kind of story, Chinese story. One person was dreaming. In his dream, he finds that he became butterfly. Then in the waking state, he is thinking, am I a butterfly dreaming of a human being? This is allegory. And now neuroscientists are really puzzled how to distinguish uh, this dreaming, dream state and waking state. People say that there is a phase transition occurs from waking state to dream state, but I'm not going into details about this because uh, my intention today is to talk about the states of meditation.
Okay, let's just. And now if you look at the researches on meditation and its correlate or its imprint in neuroscience on the brain waves, you can see the number of papers published, how exponentially it grows and thousands and thousands of papers every year it is coming. So this is a kind of database that how many papers are coming for each year. Now, uh, we, are, we will speak about different stages of meditation and Indian wisdom. You can ask me why I am talking about different states of meditation and neuroscience. There, there is a deep issue behind that. Issue is that uh, we say that uh, this subject or this man or woman is a deep meditator. And some other people, they are, say, they are not at all meditator or not deep meditator. So the pertinent issue is, what do we mean by deep meditator? Can we scientifically understand when we say deep meditator? Because if we do believe that there is an imprint of meditation on the neuronal architecture, then some sort of imprint should be there. So can you really quantify these things? Normally, the neuroscientists around the world, they think who has completed 10,000 hours of meditation, he can be considered a deep meditator. But immediately you might ask, well, Shankaracharya, at the age of four or five, he became enlightened. So from what about Shankaracharya's meditative states? So we think this is not the way to talk about deep meditation. Some scientific way should be there. And we are trying to do that both from experimental and theoretical standpoint. As I told you that I have consulted three books, Patanjali Yogasutra, Kamala Silaj Bhavanakram, this is Buddhist text, and Ganarnavo Acharya Shubhachandra, this is joint text. Now, uh, if we go to meditation terminology, I mean, there are different terms used in meditation, dhyana, concentration or contemplation or absorption, then samadhi, that concentration or state of concentration, then bhavana, because in Kamal Shila's book, it is written bhavanakram. So bhavana is like cultivation or development or contemplation. And samuta, there is also a word used in meditation context, it is called tranquility, calm, abiding, etc. Now, uh, what the uh, neuroscientists they do it. Neuroscientists they use different instruments like EEG, fMRI, MEG, and some other machines. With the machines, what they try to see? They try to look at the functioning of the brain or how neurons behave when a certain person is in a meditative state. And mainly what they found that meditation and mindfulness training can cause neuroplastic changes to the gray matter of your brain. Also, it is found Darshan Hello? Somebody is telling anything? No, you continue. Okay. And also, the thickness of the thickness of cortex also is changed during meditation. And finally, it is found that the meditation in different traditions, say Hindu tradition, like uh, even within Hindu tradition, there are many, many different schools, like somebody say Sahaja Yoga, somebody say, uh, I mean, uh, mindfulness meditation or Vipassana or some other meditation. 
So depending on that particular meditation technique, people got the dominance of different type of brain oscillation or brain waves in different region of the brain. So this is a, a big issue. I mean, why the different type of meditation gives rise to different type of waves in different areas, cortical areas of the brain. Now, various studies of meditation and what are the neuronal correlate means what is the correlation between neuronal architecture and the meditative states. So our motto is how to quantify or whether it is at all possible to quantify the states of meditation or samadhi. And then we can say, well, this person is a deep meditator or this person is not a deep meditator or he is just sleeping. So in this process, let me explain what is samadhi. Samadhi is not only a state, but also it is a process. And mainly, broadly speaking, there are two types of samadhi in any kind of uh, schools or like Hindu, Buddhist, or even Jain. One is called conceptual samadhi. Another is non-conceptual and non-dual samadhi. What do you mean by conceptual samadhi? In conceptual samadhi, various types of cognitive processes are involved. So various types of oscillation be present at different cortical area depending on different techniques because different techniques are used by different schools which are related to the various cognitive processes. And normally within this stage, they focus on a particular object. So it is called conceptual samadhi. Another is non-conceptual and non-dual samadhi. And this probably is the highest stage. So uh, many people are thinking, or they have a puzzle that how to really distinguish from scientific point of view, these states of meditation. Before that, let me show you uh, how many techniques people used in different meditation. Uh, say, if we consider a focused meditation, in focused meditation, there is dominance of gamma waves, 30 to 50 hertz, and uh, also beta waves, 20 to 30 hertz. And you can see many, many uh, meditation technique used from different schools, including Jain school and different Hindu school. Then open monitoring, the theta wave is dominant, five to eight hertz. And then automatic self-transcending alpha wave, which is eight to 10 hertz. So in different meditation, if you use different meditation techniques, different type of waves will dominate. What is the reason? Reason is very simple that different meditation, with the help of different meditation techniques, we are using different type of cognitive activities. And these brain waves in conceptual samadhi are associated with cognitive activities. And as different techniques in different schools, they use different ways or different means. So uh, different cortical areas are activated and the different waves will dominate. And this is the structure of the brain. And uh, we can see that in different, different meditation technique, focused attention, where uh, like frontal temporal alpha wave dominates, somewhere is frontal temporal beta wave dominates. This is from the imaging techniques. I'll show you some different ways. So uh, what are the neuronal oscillations associated with the underlying meditation states? The most commonly studied specific meditation practice are focused attention, open monitoring, as well as transcendental meditation, and a loving kindness meditation. All these are associated with global increase in oscillatory activities 
compared to the naive adults who don't have any meditative experience. Now, if you look at the imaging study, then you can see that different areas of the brain, say the red one is focused attention, the blue one is open monitoring, this one is mantra meditation, and yellow one is loving kindness. So in different meditation, you can look the different cortical areas are being activated because depending on different meditation techniques. Here also, you can see uh, the cortical area, thickness of the cortical area also increase during meditation. And this is showing in the imaging. Okay. Uh, now we'll go directly to states of meditation and traditional knowledge. This is called, we have taken it from Samadhi Pada of Patanjali Jagasutra. Patanjali defines two broad categories of Samadhi. One is Sampragyata Samadhi, another is Asampragyata Samadhi. Sampragyata means focusing on particular object. And Asampragyata means it's the higher state where you are not focusing on any kind of object. And also in Thai, Jain philosophy, there are different type of meditation. The, uh, there are four types of meditation in Jain uh, book, Jain text, Ganarno. That is, four states are Artho, Rodro, Dharmya, and Shukla. And again, the first two are inauspicious. I will not discuss various states of meditation right now because this is not our uh, primary goal here. Now the question is, these different states of meditation, how to characterize it and how you can find using imaging techniques. And here lies the debate. Uh, in, in physics, we use the concept of coherence. Coherence of what? I mean, you consider the two neurons at two different places. And these neurons, they have a different phases. They might have different phase. And they might have different associated with the wave, but the phases are different at the two places of neurons. And the amplitude of the wave at two places also might be different. So what scientists do normally to find the degree of coherence that how at different places of the cortical areas, the waves called brain waves, their phases are correlated or their amplitude are correlated. But you can ask me, why we are asking, thinking or talking about this degree of coherence? Because with the help of degree of coherence, degree of coherence, mathematical definition is this, it is already built up in EEG machine nowadays available in the market. But this degree of coherence, the value lies between zero and one. So if degree of coherence of particular person who is meditating is goes nearer to one, we say is deep meditation. Now then how to characterize different states? Well, I, I can found for somebody 0.75, for some other body, maybe 0.9, or some other persons, maybe 0.6, but whether we can characterize different states mentioned in our traditional knowledge, either Hindu or Buddhist or joint philosophy, we can quantify it through our imaging study with mathematical formula. And there are two types of coherence. One is called spatial coherence, another is called temporal coherence. What do you mean by that? I'm not going into mathematical details here. I'll try to say you physically. Suppose you take the two points in the cortical areas separated by a particular distance, and then I'll try to understand the phases at point B, phases at the point A, how they are correlated, and from that correlation, 
here you know these are the correlations functions and from the correlations we can calculate what are the degree of coherence normally in eeg machine up to this they consider temporal uh, spatial coherence but what we propose that no we need also temporal coherence but why because uh, when we try to characterize different meditative states then it is also pertinent to ask for how much time a person can stay in particular meditative states so you need to know temporality so we are proposing which is not there in the market not there in the machine nobody has published any paper on that we say that we need to study both spatial and temporal coherence here this is called formula for temporal coherence you can uh, get it from like analyzing the signals or the brain waves and you can calculate and you see this lies between 0 and 1 and this is uh, the sample i mean this is a data from where how can i calculate the coherence this is like a wave and from the these are the amplitude and this is the phases so from the phases and amplitude you can calculate the coherence coherence between two points a and b but uh, this is uh, i i must say this is uh, i should not say this is things one statement like uh, many people many neuroscientists they buy a machine from the market and in the machines the programming is there so just they feed up the data or data from the brain and uh, the calculation automatically comes out but they don't understand what in by coherence why we need to understand coherence and how to calculate it so uh, we are saying the participation of more and more physicists who are uh, working on the optics they should come out and really a comprehensive framework might come out in this situation again the very important problem like uh, now dr bhandari and other physicists might ask me well you are calculating degree of coherence but the associated thing is that if we say coherence then comes noise suppose somebody's degree of coherence is 0.6 why 0.6 because there are noise also suppose you are sending a signal from telecommunication channel then with the signal there will be some noise and if you can increase the signal to noise ratio i mean reducing more and more the noise level then you can get more and more signal so here is also in the meditation we have to understand the noise in the brain itself what do you mean by noise let me just try to explain in very layman's terminology uh okay yeah so what 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 do you mean by noise and meditation patanjali yoga sutra starts with chitta vritti nirodha what is mean by chitta vritti nirodha vritti means uh perturbation nirodha means cessation chitta means mind so before meditation you have to stop the perturbation or many many scattered thoughts are coming you have to remove that then only you can start meditation so he said chitta vritti nirodha i mean how to dissolve or seize the scattered thoughts then what is noise yes we, we published very interesting paper commentary on patanjali yoga sutra in one of the best journal called frontiers in psychology published from switzerland what is we say that noise in its general definition is called unwanted variation you might immediately ask me well say uh, karnataki classical music 
is very good for somebody. But who is, who is uh, listening to or used to listen Hindustani classical music, he might say, well, uh, it, it seems to me not very uh, good. It, it's like uh, noise. So noise depends on the context itself. And uh, the same thing might be uh, very good for somebody. Same thing might be uh, not good for some other body. For him or her, it is called noise. And for somebody, it's called signal. So in our traditional wisdom, this noise was clearly defined. And we have to understand what are the sources of noise in the brain itself. Yeah, now let me tell you what are the sources of noise in the brain. Uh, in the brain, I mean, normally uh, in, in thermodynamics and quantum theory, they put some physical limit. But in the brain, there are uh, mainly four types of noise. One is called stimulus noise. I mean, you are looking something, you are hearing something, then stimulus is coming from the outside world. So along with the stimulus, some noise is also coming. This is from external world, external sources. But brain also has internal perturbation, internal noise. That is very important for the study of meditation and its characterization because scientists, they discover imaging machines like EEG, where there is a programming, they can eliminate the noise from outside world. Suppose you are practicing yoga, but you are in a wrong posture. People say that wrong posture cannot lead you to really good state of meditation. So here wrong posture should be considered as producing some noise. Now, this is called the noise coming from outside world. But in the brain itself, there are some inside noise, inside perturbation. Those are very important for understanding meditation and characterizing various states of meditation. That is called ion channel noise. What is that? In our brain, uh, some information say, is supposed coming from outside world. And then this information is carried out by some small channel in the protein. And these are called ion channel. Ion channels are very important because they are responsible for propagation of information. So there are many types of ion channel, potassium, sodium, calcium, et cetera, et cetera. And the channel, I mean, it has a two ends, like a tube in the protein. So there are two valves which can open up. So this opening and closing of the valves, they produce a noise, a perturbation. It is shown from uh, experimental observations. And now, the channel noise, this noise comes to the cognitive states. We are thinking something. We are making a meditation on a particular object. Then this noise from the ion channel, they might perturb me. So I have to be careful that how to avoid, or brain has to be careful how to avoid this thing. Then there are synapses along the neurons and the synaptic noise is there. And also uh, the cellular contracted and secretory noise that is muscle and glands noise. So there are two, mainly two distinct sources behind execution noise called, no, one is from starting from nonlinear dynamics, another is stochastic noise. What is that? I mean, in layman term, let us think of it. In some system, uh, in, in Newtonian paradigm, we say, I mean, from the basic school level physics. If you, want, if you throw a stone from certain place and it goes somewhere in pulse down, and if you put from where and what time you are throwing the stone in the equation called Newtonian equation, then you can precisely tell what will be the trajectory, I mean, in which path the stone will go and fall. 
This is called deterministic systems. But within deterministic system, if the system is nonlinear, then a very peculiar thing happens. And what is the peculiarity? Suppose you throw a stone from your place and you determine the place is say x equal to say one meter from your wall. And now if there is a changes in this position slightly for certain systems, then you cannot say exactly where it will fall. This is a very, very interesting discovery by scientists. And stochastic noise means some irregular fluctuations, like there is very uh, good example, very good and old example called Brownian noise. Robert Brown in 19th century, he found that if you put pollen grains in the water, then pollen grains will start moving in a very irregular way. After that, Albert Einstein, he formulated theory or theory of Brownian motion. And then a lot of conceptual development happened. So there are two types of random nation noise. One is called epistemic, another is ontic. What is epistemic means lack of knowledge. What is ontic means inherently system is noisy. Why I am telling these things? Because these things should be considered in understanding the states of meditation because we are trying to understand states of meditation with the help of our brain. So our brain is a very complicated instrument or machine itself. I am telling it in very uh, rudimentary way. People might ask, well, brain is not a machine. Brain is not uh, you know, instrument. Okay, that debate I am not going. But in general, you can think in terms of a instrument or machine. Now, let me go. In Dhyano, in Dhyano, all Dhyanos are said to share the quality of Ekagrata or one pointedness of mind. After first Dhyano, discursive thinking is said to be eliminated. Both Vitorko and Vicharo are absent in the second one. At this point, while concept may be present in the mind, one is no longer engaged in intellectual deliberation. I mean, I am talking about stage of meditation. Thus, for the second, third, and fourth dhyanod, this consideration completely rule out possibility of Chintanmayi Prabhga and Kamal Sila. He proposed a model of Kamal Sila, I mean, Buddhist scholar. He proposed a model of three kinds of Prabhga, study, thinking, and meditation. It is also described in Brihadaranya Gopanishad. It is said it is one self which one should see and on which one should reflect and concentrate. For by seeing and hearing oneself, by reflecting and concentrating oneself, one gains the knowledge of this whole world. So uh, now let us discuss very briefly what is samadhi and noise reduction. Because in a sense, brain can be considered a noise reducing machine or noise reducing instrument. Say, everybody, uh, each of you know that samadhi derived from the verb dha means to put or to join or unite. Samo means together. A around with masculine suffix T. Samadhi means placing around together or simply bringing together. This means single pointedness, thereby excluding states of concentration that are not directly towards liberation. So we can say that some noise or unwanted variation is reduced in the process. Again, Samadhi can be classified in, into two broad classes. As I told, Sampragata Samadhi and Asampragata Samadhi. Or you can think of Nirvikalpa Samadhi or Sabikalpa Samadhi. And the great challenge to scientists, neuroscientists, that how we can take, get the imprint of 
nirvikalpa samadhi and shavikalpa samadhi uh, it reminds me a beautiful example given by ramakrishna paramahamsa he told that uh, he was giving an example of nirvikalpa samadhi he told you think of a doll made of salt and the doll wants to measure the depth of the ocean as soon as the doll goes to depth to measure the depth of the ocean it melted away so this is like nirvikalpa samadhi and shavikalpa samadhi you know this is focusing or making attention to particular object now we want to understand what happens in neuronal architecture in case of nirvikalpa samadhi nobody has done such experiment because very, firstly it is very very difficult to get such a person who practices or who can reach at the stage of nirvikalpa samadhi i mean many people might say that but we we need to find whether we can find some imprint of nirvikalpa samadhi and another challenge i didn't find any paper thousands and thousands of people are coming on meditation and i'm uh, recently editing a special issue on that from frontier of neuroscience suppose somebody is practicing one meditation one type of meditation say one type of buddhist meditation now if i say if i tell him can you practice another type of meditation which is in hindu tradition why because in one type of meditation people say thickness of the cortex will increase or dominance of particular type of oscillation will occur now if a person practices different type of meditation from different tradition what happens what about the uh, plasticity of the brain how it, it is major uh, i i talked to many gurus uh, present gurus regarding this thing they told well it's very difficult to find such a person but ramakrishna said that i practiced all type of meditation techniques and i reached to the same state so this is one of the big challenge firstly to find out such a person who can experience nirvikalpa samadhi and second one what what types of waves what type of activities are there in neuronal architecture if not then we can say the modern paradigm of understanding brain function or essentially as the functioning of the brain is explained using the laws of physics might fail and we need to discover new paradigm it's a big challenge to both neuroscientist and physicist so uh, our motto is challenges to neuroscience is how to characterize the different states of meditation so we can say this man this person is a deep meditator or the less meditator deep we can find it out and it helps a lot of way in scientific research then we need to calculate spatial and temporal coherence and how it is related to cognition and brain rhythms and finally nirvikalpa samadhi even in join philosophy that book which just reached my house one hour before i could not uh, get the time to look at so uh, i don't know what uh, join scholars like shubhachandra discussed about states of meditation maybe in some other occasion i can discuss from join perspective so thank you for thank you very much i have some clarifications if you yes, permit sir, me yang chang ji sahab jara aap rukayenge sir ye number mein ek ek karke lunga sahab ha aap se request hai sorry hai thank you very much dr rishesh roy excellent presentation and i liked it very much and hum logon ke beech mein abhi munishri mahend kumar ji bhi upasthit hain to hum sabse pehle to unko bandnami kehte hain और उनसे निवेदन करते हैं कि आप पहले अपना इसके ऊपर कुछ संक्षिप्त अपनी व्याख्या दें मुनिश्री से पहले निवेदन करता हूं वो माइक जरा अनम्यूट कर लें
अन्य हाँ जी सर हम बोलिए साहब मुनीष हाँ। साहब हमने अभी डॉक्टर शिशिर रॉय का न्यूरो साइंस के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में मेडिटेशन के विषय में काफी जो बहुत ही डीप एक जो फाइंडिंग्स जो हमने सुने ध्यान में आए तो ये बात तो निश्चित है साइंस ने इतना तो माना ही है कि जब हमारी इलेक्ट्रो एंसेमो ग्राफ की एक्टिविटी में इलेक्ट्रिकल चेंजेस होते हैं और उन इलेक्ट्रिकल चेंजेस का सिग्निफिकेंस हमें जानना है न्यूरो साइंस से लेकिन मेडिटेशन के क्षेत्र में अंत तो गत्वा जो केवल मेडिटेशन नॉट ओनली फॉर द सेक ऑफ मेडिटेशन उसका जो मूल उद्देश्य है वो है चेतना का रूपांतरण जो चेतना में जो कुछ है उसको बदलना अब जैसे हम जैन फिलोसॉफी को ले जैन फिलोसॉफी कहती है कि चेतना के भीतर पोटेंशियली सब कुछ है अनंत ज्ञान अनंत दर्शन आदि आदि लेकिन आवरण है कर्मों का इसलिए वास्तव में ज्ञान जो अधूरा होता है मध्य ज्ञान श्रुत ज्ञान या किसी को अधिक ज्ञान हो गया या ज्यादा से ज्यादा मन पर ज्ञान हो गया केवल ज्ञान अंत तो लास्ट में हो जाता है जब ज्ञानावणी कर्म समाप्त हो जाता है तो मेडिटेशन का जो रास्ता है जो साधना है जो प्रैक्टिस है वो अल्टीमेटली हमारे चेतना की भीतर की जो भी फैकल्टी है जिसमें ज्ञान एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण फैकल्टी है लेकिन उससे भी ज्यादा जो है जिसका संबंध जैन दर्शन ने मोहनी कर्म से लिया है वीत राग भाव जिसको कहा जाता है जहां कषाल शांत हो जाते हैं शांत मतलब केवल उपशांत ही नहीं क्षीण हो जाते हैं और फिर वे कषाय पैदा नहीं होते उस स्थिति तक चेतना चली जाती है ध्यान के माध्यम से जो गुणस्थानों का आरोहण होता है जिसमें शपक श्रेणी का जो ध्यान आरोहण है उसमें धीरे धीरे मोहनी कर्म की जो प्रकृतियां हैं उनको क्षय करते करते फिर चार कषाय के चार चार भेद है अनंतानुबंधी अप्रत्याख्यानी प्रत्याख्यानी और संजलन ये सोलह प्रकृतियां चार 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 और नौ नौ कषाय ये पच्चीस चारित्र मोनी की और तीन दर्शन मोनी की मोनी कर्म का जो नाश करना क्षय करना उसी के द्वारा चेतना अनावृत होगी और पहले वितरण अवस्था आएगी बाद में केवल व्यवस्था बारह में गुणस्थान में वितरकता आती है संपूर्ण रूप से मोहन कर्म क्षय हो जाता है और तेरहवें गुणस्थान में केवल ज्ञान केवल दर्शन की प्राप्ति हो जाती है तो मेडिटेशन का जो तो मूल उद्देश्य है कि हम चेतना को रूपांतरित कैसे करें इधर न्यूरो साइंस पास के पास में जो भी गैजेट्स हैं टूल्स हैं जो भी तरीके हैं टेक्निक्स हैं उससे हम कोरिलेट कर सकते हैं कि एक मेडिटेशन चाहे वो किसी पद्धति से करता है अल्टीमेटली उसका मेजरमेंट अगर करना है तो हमें न्यूरो साइंस को पिक्चर में लाना पड़ेगा और फिर अगर हमारे पास जैसे आज न्यूरोनल हॉर्मोन्स जो है जिसमें यही मोहरी कर्म की प्रकृतियों का प्रकटीकरण होता है जिसमें न्यूरोनल हॉर्मोन्स हॉर्मोनल ऐसे में पता चलता है कि कौन सी मोहरी कर्म की प्रकृति कितनी क्षय हुई कम हुई या नहीं हुई क्रोध है भय है सेक्स है आदि आदि तो अब ये जो इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यू शिशिर रॉय ने रखा है और ये स्टडी इसलिए महत्वपूर्ण है कि आखिर हमें जो आगे बढ़ना है विश्व में ध्यान को हमें एक साइंटिफिक टेक्नोलॉजी स्पिरिचुअल टेक्नोलॉजी के रूप में अगर 
प्रस्तुत करना चाहते हैं तो उसका न्यूरो साइंटिफिक सिग्निफिकेंस हमें क्वांटिफाई करना होगा और फिर प्रैक्टिकल एप्लीकेशन देखना होगा डे टू डे लाइफ में जहां व्यक्ति अपने बिहेवियर के कारण एक और कर्म का बंधन भी करता है और दूसरी ओर अपनी प्रेजेंट लाइफ को विशेष कर देता तो ध्यान एक ऐसा स्पिरिचुअल साधना का क्षेत्र है मार्ग है जहां पर चल करके दोनों तरफ आध्यात्मिक दृष्टि से आत्मा की शुद्धि में कषायों की निवृत्ति कषायों की मुक्ति उसे हमेशा शुद्धिकरण की ओर ले जाती है वहां दूसरी ओर व्यक्तिगत लाइफ में जो जो कषाय कम होते हैं और भाव विशुद्ध होते हैं डिस्ट्रक्टिव इमोशंस कम होते हैं बिहेवियर मोर ह्यूमनिस्टिक बनता है और फिर रिलेशंस जो है इंडिविजुअल सोशल उसमें भी एक परिवर्तन तो दिस इज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल टेक्नोलॉजी इन और प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ हम अगर केवल अध्यात्म की बात करते हैं तो भी ये ध्यान का मार्ग हमारे लिए एकमात्र मार्ग है जो न्यूरोलॉजिकल चेंजेस ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन और उनको गठित करके और हमें डेवलपमेंट की ओर ले जाए अगर हम साइकोलॉजी में सोशियोलॉजी में सोशल रिलेशन प्रेजेंट लाइफ की बात करते हैं तो भी हमें मेडिटेशन की जो टेक्निक है उनका न्यूरोलॉजिकल स्टडी करना पड़ेगा और लास्ट में जाकर के हम कैसे उसके एप्लीकेशन से ह्यूमन लाइफ को बेटर बना सकते हैं तो मैं समझता हूँ ये शिशि रोय जी का जो लेक्चर है टेक्निकल काफी है और उसको समझने के लिए बेसिक न्यूरो साइंस साइंटिफिक टर्मिनोलॉजी और उसकी जो गणित है उसका भी ज्ञान जरूरी है लेकिन हम उसको एक बार एक साइड में भी रखते हैं फिर भी ये तो स्पष्ट होता है कि सबके लिए साइंटिस्ट के लिए भी और स्पिरिचुअलिस्ट के लिए भी मेडिटेशनल टेक्निक से न्यूरोलॉजिकल चेंजेस को ला करके लाइफ को बेटर बनाना डिस्टर्बिंग इमोशंस को धीरे धीरे कम करना और बेटर ह्यूमन लाइफ इंडिविजुअली एंड सोशल व्यक्तिगत और समाज दोनों में और अपने जाकर हम इस हारमोनी को लाए तो फिर नॉन वायलेंस है पीस है ये सब अपने आप उससे ठीक हो जाएंगे इस से डॉक्टर का ये जो प्रयत्न है रियली वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द साइंटिस्ट मेनली दे हैव टू प्रोसीड फर्दर बाय स्टडिंग वेरियस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ मेडिटेशन दे इफेक्ट एंड दे एप्लीकेशन इन अवर लाइफ so it is very important that i should give congratulations to dr shishi roy for presenting this issue in this a subject in a very scientific and very precise way and we shall see further that how the uh, scientists in the field of neuroscience work in this area and and the humanity is uh, benefited by the research thank you थैंक यू बहुत बहुत आभार मुनिश्री का बहुत आशीर्वचन के रूप में बहुत आपने गाइडेंस दिया और शिष्य रॉय जी के काम को आगे 